The new season of Pokemon Go has just been announced and there is some fun and meta-relevant stuff in here. Timeless Travels will run from December 1st, 2023 to March 1st, 2024. Again, this season we are getting ticketed timed researches, so I would say at this point Niantic is definitely trying out the Battle Pass system for Pokemon Go. Hopefully this one is better than the last. The Adventure of Balance ticket had some decent items in there, but more items were definitely needed and more tasks as well to make the ticket fun and worth it. This season, however, it looks like there will be a ticket for each month instead of of the whole season, which depending on the cost versus rewards could be good. So far the only rewards mentioned are Hitsuian encounters and some incubators. We'll have to wait and see what Niantic actually does, as there are no other details yet for these tickets. When the details are released, I'll make some videos on them, go over what you'll get, give you some thoughts on their worth, and that should hopefully help you decide whether you want to purchase and play those ticketed timed researches. Now let's take a look at the trailer for this season, break it down, see what we can figure out. Looking at some of the Pokemon and the trailer art, we can definitely see a Legends Arceus theme to this season. The first thing we see in the trailer are Hisui and Decidueye, Hisui and Samurott, and Hisui and Typhlosion. Hisui and Samurott already has a raid day announced for December 3rd from 2 to 5 p.m. Weird Ear, which is the Hisui and evolution of Stantler, is also seen later in the trailer and also has a raid day announced for December 23rd. So it's safe to say that the other two will also be released in raid days as well probably in the new year as they haven't been announced yet. I'll put out a video soon about Samurott and Weird Deer raid days, giving you all the details, some tips and tricks. And same thing for the other two when they're announced. Looking at December's Community Day, once again, it will be featuring all the Community Day Pokemon from this year. This is another chance to catch those Pokemon with some boosted shiny rates and also evolve them for their legacy moves during the event hours. So tag any tier one or tier two evolutions you still have in your bag that you didn't get to evolve during their Community Days. We also get our first official glimpse for a new new NPC who will be showing up along routes. Speculation is that you'll be able to trade with them when you encounter them along routes. It'll be interesting to see how that kind of works. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Ditto is also shown alongside a few other Pokemon and a Pokestop showcase. So maybe an event featuring these Pokemon with showcases to go along with it. Hopefully it's not Squirtle showcases. Might also be that Ditto will be able to spawn as these Pokemon in the wild. I'm not entirely sure what that little clip means, but something with Ditto will be happening. The new costume Pikachu PhD also appears to be debuting and might be in showcases, which sort of fits with this whole time and space theme, which they mentioned in this trailer and which they've kind of been building up to for the new Go Tour. There's also a countdown on the website for Go Tour news coming on November 29th. I'll make a video about that when the news drops. And then we can also see Shadow Ho-Oh makes a little cameo in there flying through the air. So Shadow Ho-Oh definitely coming back probably in shiny form, which would be pretty fun to hunt. And then at the end of the trailer, we get a little teaser for Dialga and Palkia, which Pokeminers have found had the origin form assets added to the game a while ago, as well as their legacy moves, which will have uses in the overworld, which is very interesting. And then with that countdown timer, it looks like the Sinnoh tour is coming early 2024. So following that pattern of previous years with the Kanto, Johto, and Hoenn tours coming in the early part of the year, I also think this is going to feature both Sinnoh and Hisui in Pokemon, given that Haisu is Sinnoh just far, far in the past. So I think that will spice the Sinnoh tour up a little bit, make it a little bit more interesting. Next, let's get into the season details. So taking a look at the season bonuses, this season, starting on December 1st, we will get one guaranteed Candy XL from Trading Pokemon for Trainos level 31 and above. We'll get one additional Candy from Trading Pokemon. We'll also get increased chance for Rare Candy XL from in-person five-star raids for Trainers level 31 and above. Might not be a huge boost on that one. It hasn't been in the past. It is always nice to get those rare candy XL, but don't count on it being a huge amount of them. And then finally, we'll also get increased XP for seven day Pokestop spin streaks and increased Stardust for seven day Pokemon catch streaks. Definitely make sure you get out there, spin a stop, catch a Pokemon at least one time every day for the entire month of December if you can. Next up, let's take a look at the raid bosses. There is some great stuff in here, some really meta relevant stuff that you might not want to miss. First up in five star raids, we have Reshiram from December 1st to December 9th, Zekrom from December 9th to December 16th, Chiron from December 16th to December 23rd, and finally Regigigas from December 23rd to January 1st, all of which can be shiny, which is fantastic, and they always switch out at 10 a.m. in the morning. Reshiram, a great fire raid attacker. Zekrom, a great electric raid attacker. Chiron is a D 
decent ice type raid attacker and Regigigas is huge. Next up, we'll have Mega Raids. First in Mega Raids will be Mega Caesar from December 1st to December 9th. Next up is Mega Altaria from December 9th to December 16th. After that is Mega Obama Snow from December 16th to December 23rd. And finally, Mega Glalie from December 23rd to January 1st, all of which can be shiny. So if you don't have the shiny or you need Mega Energy for any of these, make sure you make note, get out there while they're out, do a few of those raids, get the shinies, get the Mega Energy. And then of course, every Wednesday from 6 to 7 p.m. we have raid hours for the month of December, we will have Reshiram on December 6th, Zekrom on December 13th, Kyrom on December 20th, and Regigigas on December 27th. Shadow Zapdos will also be returning to Shadow Raids on the weekend, so another chance to get that Shadow Shiny if you missed it, or more candies for Zapdos. And finally, Shadow ho -Oh looks like it'll be getting its own event, as Shadow Zapdos will supposedly be in Shadow Raids every weekend. Not sure what that event will look like or when it will happen, but I do believe that means the Shiny will be released for Shadow ho -Oh. That is something else to watch out for, and I'll definitely make a video for that when that news is released. Next up, we have Spotlight Hours. So every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m., we get a featured Pokemon that spawns abundantly in the wild. No boosted shiny rates, but we do get an event bonus with it. So let's take a look at our Spotlight Hours for December. We'll have Phoebus on December 5th with two times catch candy. Phoebus becomes Milotic. Milotic has some play in the Ultra League. On December 12th, we'll have Seal with two times transfer candy. Seal becomes Dugong. Dugong has some play in the Great League and the Ultra League. On December 19th, we'll have Snow Runt with two times evolution XP. Snow Runt can become Glalie, who has a Mega in the game, as well as Frostlass. Frostlass has some play in the Great League. And finally, on December 26th, we'll get Vanillite with two times catch Stardust, so that is a great bonus. And Vanillite, of course, can be shiny for the first time in Pokemon Go during this season. The December ticket is also mentioned at the bottom of this graphic that was put out on the Pokemon Go Twitter. I'm not entirely sure if that is because it will have something to do with the spotlight hours or just because someone at Niantic decided to kind of put it in here. Not entirely sure on that. Next up, let's take a look at the other events that are going to be happening during December. As I mentioned before, there will be a Hisuian Samurott raid day on December 1st from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Then on December 5th to December 8th, we'll have all along the routes starting at 10 a.m. ending at 8 p.m. On December 9th, we'll have the Catch Mastery Ice event starting at 10 a.m. and ending at 8 p.m. on the same day. Don't know what the featured Pokemon will be. Could be Cryogonal, could maybe be Cubchoo and Beartech, could also be Vanillite, I guess, with the shiny coming out. Not entirely sure. However, these events usually featured some boosted shiny rates for the featured Pokemon, as well as timed and field research that focuses around catching them and gives you more encounters. Next up, from December 11th to December 15th, we'll have the Adamant Time event from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. On December 16th to December 17th, we will have that December Community Day from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. each day. On December 18th to the 25th, we will have the Winter Holiday Part 1 event from 10 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then during that event, we will have the Weird Deer Raid Day on December 23rd from 2 to 5 p.m. as well as the Winter Wonderland event from December 23rd to December 24th starting at 10 a.m. ending at 8 p.m. And then finally on December 25th to December 31st we'll have the Winter Holiday Part 2 event starting at 10 a.m. and ending at 8 p.m. I will of course make videos for all of these events as we get the details so stay tuned for that. Niantic has also released dates for other community days during this season. We of course have the December 16th to 17th catch-up community day but then on January 6th there will be a community day. On January 20th there'll be a Community Day Classic. And then finally on February 4th, we will have our final Community Day for the season. Next up, let's take a look at our seasonal rotations. So in breakthrough boxes, we will have Lapras, Galarian Weezing, Galarian Mr. Mime, Furfru, Gumi, and Jangmo-O. All of which, except for Jangmo-O, can be shiny. We'll also see the Wild Spawn switch up for the season. In the city, we are going to have Vulpix, Ampharos, Sneasel, Zigzagoon, Trubbish, Clink, Nimble, and more of the ones listed. All of them except for Nimble can be shiny. In the forest, we'll see Parasect, Alolan Executor, Scyther, Combi, Dwebble, Harsimian, Smoliv, and more. Of the ones listed, Alolan Executor, Scyther, Combi, and Dwebble can all be shiny. In the mountains, we'll see Alolan Geodude, Rhyhorn, Larvitar, Sableye, Bronzor, Rog and Roller, Drillbur, and more. All of the listed ones can be shiny. Near water, we'll see Alolan Dugtrio, Shelder, Haldian Wooper, Lotad, Corfish, Clampearl, Gumi, and more. Of the ones listed, all of them except for the Alolan Dugtrio can be shiny. In the northern hemisphere, we're going to see the spawn switch up. We'll see Beldum, Pida, Fungus, Deerling Winter, Chespin, Fennekin, Froki, and more. All of the listed ones except for that Deerling can be shiny. And then finally in the Southern Hemisphere, we'll see Trico, Torkic, Mudkip, Shroomish, Starly, Gibble, Deerling Summer, and more. Again, of the ones listed, all of them except for the Deerling can be shiny. With the season change, we'll also get a switch up in the egg pool. So for the two kilometer eggs, we are going to see Pichu, Tyrogue, Smoochum, Togepi, Smoliv, and more. All of the listed ones except for Smoliv can be shiny.
shiny. And the five kilometer eggs, we'll see Elekid, Megby, Sprigatito, Fuecoco, Quaxly, Pommy, and more. Of the ones listed, only Elekid and Megby can be shiny. In the seven kilometer eggs, we are gonna see Alolan Sandshrew, Alolan Geodude, Alolan Grimer, Paldean Whooper, and more. Of the ones listed, all of them can be shiny. And then in our 10 kilometer eggs, we are gonna see Dratini, Beldum, Carbink, Bridgebacks, and more. Of the ones listed, Dratini and Beldum are the only ones that can be shiny. Two pretty good and meta relevant shinies in there though. Also that Frigibax, which I still need candies for, so I'm definitely gonna be hatching a few of those. And then finally, we have our Adventure Sync eggs. So in our five kilometer Adventure Sync eggs, we are gonna see Cleffa, Riolu, Tortuga, Archon, and more. All of the ones listed can be shiny in there. And then in our 10 kilometer Adventure Sync eggs, we are gonna see Bagon, Dino, Gumi, Rockruff, and more. Again, all of those listed can be shiny. That's all the event details we have for now. All in all, I think there is some pretty good stuff in there. There's some meta relevant stuff. There's some fun stuff. There's some cute stuff. There's a lot of shiny stuff. Once again, I'm especially excited for the raids this season. As we get more details, I will make videos breaking it all down for you, giving you tips and tricks. Subscribe to catch all those videos when they come out. If you found this video useful, hit the like button. We'll see you in the next one. I've got something incredibly funky.